So I, I promised at the beginning I would tell you about some structure and the loop space, right? Uh, so. Or maybe just on the homology of the loop space. That's at least what I'll, uh, what I'll do. And when we talked about, we started by talking about structures. And I said, well, the first thing you can you have on the loop space is an S1 action. So we could rotate the loops. And you can write this formally as saying, well, there's a map S1 cross LM to LM. I take a time t and a loop gamma, and I, I rotate gamma by t. So that means I, I do a precomposition by rotation, plus or minus, whatever you like. Okay? So there is this map. What does it mean on homology? It means on homology that I have map homology S1, tensor homology loop space to homology loop space. Um, or on cohomology, well, what is the, maybe we should say, what is the interesting part of this map? Once I write it down in homology, this, this has two classes, right? It has the base point in H0. The base point in H0 is a degree 0 map. It will correspond to degree 0 map. It's the identity map, right? 0 doesn't move the loop, doesn't move the loop. It's not very interesting. Uh, so the interesting part is the fundamental class in H1. This is where uh, something is going on. And that will give you a degree 1. If I take a degree 1 here, it will increase the degree. So this induces a map H LM to H plus 1 of LM. Uh, or in cohomology, cohomology LM to cohomology minus 1. If you turn er everything around, the degree will, will go down. OK, so, so that's the interesting part of the S1 action. And now we have a, we had this uh, model for the loop space that was using Hochschild uh, homology. So let's, let's, what, what do we have there uh, in, in Hochschild homology or on the Hochschild complex homology? Uh, there's a map. Uh, would be usually from C star AA to C star plus 1 AA for any algebra. Uh, this is called the con Lina Hart operator. Um, was discovered by these guys independently. They were looking at the Hochschild complex, thinking about all sorts of other things. Uh, B of, let me write it once, B A0 tensor A. And this was an element in this Hochschild complex. Uh, so let me just say star A A was this sum of A tensor A bar tensor N. OK, I mean the reduced reduced Hochschild complex, this one. Uh, this is, by definition, minus, well, a uh, sum i0 to n minus 1 to some long sign a0 a i minus a i, I, it doesn't really matter, a i, a i plus 1. These are the degrees of these elements, a n plus i times n, and then I go a i plus 1 tensor. No, I don't do that. 1 <laughs> tensor a i plus 1 tensor a n tensor a 0 a i. OK, so what have I done? Except for a horrendous sign here, uh, I've taken these guys. And I've split them into two halves, a0 to ai, ai plus 1 to an. And I've put half of them back. OK, I've cyclically rotated in all possible manners. Oh, and I put this 1 in front. OK, because I put the 1 in front, the degree goes up by 1, right? 
Okay. So, so thanks to this one degree. Okay, I've done that. Claim this is a chain map. Yes. Yeah, yeah correct, sort of correct, correct. Yeah. It's zero if a node is not in. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. I project. Yes, yes. Uh, I'll go. Yeah. Uh, so it's a chain map. So it induces. So it commutes with the differential. One can check this. So it induces a map Hochschild homology A A to Hochschild plus one. Okay. So. Now we had this dictionary between the homology at the loose space and the Hochschild complex. And so theorem, this is part of Jones's theorem, is that under these, these two, two things, these two maps are the same under the isomorphism we wrote yesterday the iso homology, cohomology of LM isomorphic to Hochschild homology of the cochains. OK. So uh, as I was preparing these lectures, I was thinking I should talk about the S1 action. And then I looked at these two things and I went, oh man, why is that? <laughs> Doesn't look so clear, right? I mean, I don't know. There's something about a circle action here, right? Something is circling around. Why on earth is there one there? You know, what happened? Okay, so what I want to do is, is just, now we got so far that we, I can actually give you an idea of why this should be true. We should be able to see this, right? So sketch, sketch proof. So I tried, I tried to get people to start, to start on the computation uh, by uh, computing this S1 action. So let me do what I wanted you to do. So uh, <laughs> because it's, I was a bit, yeah, okay. If you don't know where you were supposed to get, it's not, diff not so easy. So LX, what did we use when we did this, right? We did, to show this isomorphism, what did we do? We said LX is the maps from this particular simplicial model of the circle into X. Okay, so that's our, that's where this isomorphism comes from. And the S1 action is, you know, it's pre-composition. S1 action is S1 cross LM. So this is S1 cross maps S dot M. And what do we do? Well, we pre-compose, you know, we go to these maps. It doesn't, it's not M, it's X. It doesn't have anything to do with X itself. Uh, it has something to do with this, right? It, you send gamma from S to X is mapped to, uh, you know, the map that goes S1. Well, we take a T in S1, T, and T, T in S1. And we take uh, these two guys to the map that goes S to, uh, you know, plus t, s, and then gamma, right? So everything is happening here. Really what we need, we need to understand, need to see what's going on when we do s1 cross s to s, right? This is, everything is happening here. It has nothing to do with x. Uh, and we have to understand this in some sort of simplicial world, right? The way the decomposition here happened is because we use the, the simplicial structure of this thing. Okay, so we just need to see what's going on. On on so S is a disjoint union of S K cross delta K modulo some equivalence relation, and so so we really want want to see what S one cross S K cross delta K is mapped to inside S, right? OK, that's, what, that's the computation we need to, to make. And then we will understand. Uh, 
okay? Uh, and what is SK? There's these things, you know, uh, and then we had this E and the degenerate guys, and then the degenerate guys E. And to understand the circle action, what is the circle action? Th this circle action, this is a circle, right? This is S1. And the action is I rotate. OK? I know what it is. Right? It rotates. Uh, these are now bigger simplices, but you know, so this is this was a, a, a it's a K simplex. It represents in here, I have a K simplex attached to this. So let's do cross delta K. I have a K simplex, but this K simplex here is crushed to zero. This is a, a degenerate simplex. It's totally crushed to zero. And, and this was you know, the map from delta k that crushes to e, but you know, it crushes to e, but it takes t1, tk, to t1. Right? It's the, you only remember the first coordinates. That's what these map these things are. Right? And this is the last coordinate here. This is delta k to e taking the last, the last coordinates. We have all of the coordinates. We have the circle action now. It's there. Uh, what does the circle action do? Well, 0, I know where it goes. 0 goes to t, right? If I take a little t, the circle will, you know, this is our 0 is here. This is e, somehow. And 0 goes to t, OK? And what happens to t1? Well, t1 goes to t1 plus t, OK? t1 goes to t1 plus t. And so on. E tk goes to tk plus t. So, so that we know we know what's happening to every of, of these things. Uh, so, so now let's try to think this in one in one go. What do we have? We have s1 cross uh, delta k cross uh, sk, which is you know which is this simplices like 0, uh, t1, tk. OK, I'm going to think of them like this. And they go to, I'm going to say they go to uh, each of these, they somehow go to delta uh, k plus 1 cross uh, their thing. So 0 um, up to tk plus 1. Uh, what do we, you know, 0 here, you know, we have this, this, this cross 0. Let me, we have, you know, we have all of them here, right? 0, t1, tk. Right? This is our simplicity. And here we have 0, t1, well, yeah, s1. They call this S1 and SK. Uh, what happens to, to, to 0? Well, 0, this, what happens to all these numbers, right? They are mapped to T, uh, T1 plus T, T2 plus T, TK plus T. Uh, in particular, I never hit this simplex, the sort of you know, zero is going to rotate. It's going to rotate on the whole thing. It's never. I'm never going to have anything that stays at zero. Everything rotates. So these these k guys, they will hit. You know, these these numbers were like this is no smaller equal. Smaller equal. This is smaller equal. Smaller equal. And you know, I'd like to say, well, you know, this guy hits this simplex. This is smaller equal to this smaller equal to this, right? And, and this guy hits the, the next one, and so on. But, but this is not quite right, because you know, this should be smaller equal to 1. Ah, but this is not, not necessarily smaller equal to 1. OK, so, so there's a case 1, uh, which is maybe my case 0, which is uh, you know, tk plus t is smaller equal to 1. And then there's a case, case 1, which is well, actually, this one is bigger than 1, but tk minus 1, k 
k minus 1 plus t is smaller or equal to 1 is smaller than tk plus t. Okay? And then there's a case 2 and so on. So depending on 1 is somewhere here, right? Uh, but it, it, will be, it, will, it will take every spot because at some point t is equal to 1. Okay? So what I have is actually I have k plus 1 situations depending on, on these things, right? And I'm going to hit all of these each time because I'm summing. I have so much, you know, I'm summing over, I'm taking all of t, all of t runs over s1, and each of these run over the whole delta k. I'm saying that we will run k plus 1 times over all of this thing. And, and here is exactly the formula, right? This is what we've seen. We've seen we're hitting the last we're never hitting the zeros guy, but we're hitting all of these guys. And we're doing this, well, I called k and then I mixed them up, right? But k plus 1 times, we're hitting them. And in a, you know, each time, we're in a new cyclic ordering. Okay? That's exactly what the, I'm claiming that if you translate what's going on here, you will exactly have a sum of k plus 1 terms, one for each depending on where t is, if in connection with the ti's. And you know we will have to rotate your guys because they have changed position in this. Anyway, it's a sketch. <laughs> Some people look happier than others. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. What is this good for? Right? Yes. Oh. Because you know, I well, I do ha I do have k plus one things now, right? I I do have an element in delta k plus one. No, 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 no. Zero delta k plus one is the sum of you know, it's called as s one s k plus one such that zero s one s k plus one one. Okay. I do. I did give you one more number. T wasn't there before, right? I, I used to have k. Now I have k plus one. It's just they're not quite cyclically ordered, as you know. They will be. It depends on where t is. Well, and that's why you get the sign because because of where the where the t appears. Yeah. And the sign, which is, you know, I've worked with that sign. I, uh, yeah. I times n. Uh, yeah, I don't know. So you, 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 sort of, you don't have them in an increasing order, and then you need to rearrange them. I need to rearrange them. And that's where sign. I definitely need, you know, there's a sign because I, I need to rearrange the AIs. That's clear. Where is the one? Hmm? The one is because I never hit, I never hit, there's one I never hit, right? I never hit this, uh, this guy. I see Yes. And you've written delta k cross all those t's, and you don't really mean that. You mean the, the, delta, uh, the t's are the coordinates for the delta k, and you have them cr labeled by these these a's or these these elements or these. Um, the, the, the t's are kind of in the, these t's of iron. Yes. What I really have. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's some interaction between the, between the two things, right? Yeah. But what you're doing to get. You know, it's more like this, right? I have an S1 cross a bunch of copies of delta k, right. and I'm producing one more copy of delta k plus 1. The dimension goes up. This is very natural, because I crossed with S1. I added a dimension, right. so that right. should be right. And I'm claiming this works with, this, with the face map somehow. This matches right. that it, you can glue them. It's not really a simplicial map. This is why it's difficult to write. It's other way, because I'm, you know, it depends. You know, it's different. It's not a simplicial map. It's a. Uh, okay. Why is that useful to have such a formula? Well, you know. You think you know the, the, the rotations of the loops, right? It's easy, right? You, it's a very simple map. It's, you rotate the loops, 
right? Okay, we know it, right? But if I ask you now, what is the effect of rotations of the loops on the homology of the free loop space on the sphere? Mm, maybe it is not quite so obvious, right? How do we do this? But now we have a formula, right? Uh, you know, example, remember the homology of the loop space on SM, uh, well, it was the Hochschild complex, Hochschild homology of the co chain, the, the co homology of the sphere, minus. And, you know, for example, and there were classes, there were two types of classes. There were these guys, and then there were these guys. Okay? And what do we know about the, the circle action on these guys? Hmm? Somebody already complained about this. Zero, zero right? Zero. Okay, it's zero because there's a one here, and the first thing this thing this is to put the one somewhere in the middle, but that's not a lot, so zero. Okay, no computation needed. Uh, on the other hand, what is something where I'm sure it's non-trivial? So sum, right? They're signs. If I don't want to compute the signs, when am I sure it's non-trivial? When there are odd many terms there. If, there are, uh, if there's an odd number of terms, then I know it cannot sum to zero, right? So these guys, they go to a sum plus minus one tensor x, da, 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 x, and it's at least non-zero when there are odd many terms. That is when this, I think this is the number of terms, right? Odd many implies implies non-zero. And, and, and if there are evenly many, then you have to do the computation. And maybe it is, maybe it is not zero. I don't know. Maybe it depends on m. Uh, I'm not sure. No, uh, yeah. Hmm. It cannot, right? Uh, oh, yo, yes, it can. The m is the dimension. Oh, yeah, sure. Good. OK. <coughs> Okay, so so uh, let's let's move on to more uh, more things. So so uh, we've heard a little bit. People mentioned at least uh, the Chas Sullivan product. So so called Moria Denis <laughs> product. <laughs> Yeah. We used to joke. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't dare. I was a postdoc when uh, <laughs> when the Charles Sullivan product came out. Of course, we called your daughter your daughter the Charles Sullivan product. <laughs> of course, we did. <laughs> Wouldn't have dared to say it. Okay. So what? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, um, you know, what was the idea? The idea was somewhere. Or the question, at least, well, I don't know. I make the question. Maybe you correct me. It's like, you know, there was this Goldman bracket. They're correct. Good. There was this Goldman bracket that said, you know, if you have loops, free homotopy classes of loops, you could sum over the intersections and somehow take the product at the intersection. And somehow that was well defined. OK? So, so can one do this on the loop space, right? And, and the sort of, so the, the, the theorem of Moran and Dennis is that you can, right? So. Uh, so there exists a product, HP LM tensor HQ LM to HP plus Q minus N of LM, where L, M is now a, M is an oriented closed manifold. And this product, it, it has something to do with intersection and, and concatenation in the sense that such that if you look at the homology of M with the intersection product, let's just call it this product. Uh, so this is the intersection product, which we talked about. You can include it into, you can include the manifold as constant loops into the loop space, and then you have this product, and this will respect the product. And then you can sort of intersect 
with the base loops, homology of the base loop space, and do the concatenation product. So pro product of loops, this was the based <coughs> base loops, and this is concatenation. OK, so, so there are maps like this, and they, are, they respect the various, the various products. OK? Unfortunately, uh, we didn't discover trying to generalize the Goldman bracket. Uh, and we, we were trying hmm? to prove something. When we found this, yes. we were trying to prove something, you know, how the Goldman bracket and this Turaiko bracket interact with the intersection. We we're trying to prove something that was false, in fact. Yes. Here, I was studying, but we need to study homotopies between loops, you know, like families of loops and how they change. Yeah. And that's how the loop product appeared. That it was. Ah. It wasn't trying to generalize it. It was trying <laughs> to prove some false statement. Okay. Okay. Huh? You shouldn't have said it. <laughs> we don't. I mean, it's interesting. That's just you know? that's just what life like how life is. Yes. 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 Yeah. How you know, we were talking about homotopies, and you know how the homotopy intersects at a homotopy, and, and we have a transit of the Wilma bracket, and then the loop product was behind the scenes in this story. Hmm. Huh? I don't think it's quite right. I mean, it's close, but it's. I think, I think that's possible. Are you, 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 you with what? With the base loops. So oh, you, you, you look at. Degree. Exactly, exactly, yeah, yeah. Oh, so, okay. so, so there's a vibration, yeah, I think this is fine. Is you go uh, free loops, evaluate, uh, uh, what, ah, oh, this the other way, yeah. I think it's more, uh, anyway, anyway. It's I think this is. So, so. I took the statement from their paper, right? right. <laughs> right. Okay. Well, I think I think this is I think this is fine. So yes. Yes. Where is where is the loop product in the such that like such that? This ah uh, ring maps. Yeah. They respect the map, you know, ah. modulo that I didn't tell you what that map is. Okay. Uh, so so ID ID somehow we should be able to to use the, the intersection product and the concatenation product by saying, well, if you have you know, a chain of loops, something that, you know, it's a, it's, a par it's a family, you can think of it as a family of loops, and there's another one, uh, well, you also have, if you evaluated the base point, you know, it, so chains, uh, you, you can evaluate, the, you can look at the chain of base points, and these are chains in M, and you can intersect you can do an intersection in M. You can intersect the chains of base points in M. And M is a nice closed manifold. So the root space is huge. It's not very nice. Oh, I mean, it's nice in some ways, but it's big. And, but intersection we can do in the manifold. And so we do that. And then once we have intersected, then we can do concatenation, because they have the same base point. OK, plus concatenate. So it's not that easy to, to, to make precise, but it's possible. And uh, yeah. What, what I want to do now is, uh, so there are, there are several ways to make this precise. One way is to say, to work with nice chains, chain models of the loop space. Uh, Kate knows, <laughs> worked a lot with nice chain models of the loop space. There are different ways we can do this. Uh, another way is, you know, if, uh, there's this thump on dragon things I have not told you about, uh, which gives a nice clean way of doing this. This was done by uh, uh, Cohen and Jones. Uh, uh, but but what I want to do is the algebraic way because that's what we've been doing. Okay, so I'm gonna take this into algebra and ask a question in algebra. So we'll uh, because I I say algebra is so easy, right? That's my uh, yes, <laughs> you'll see. Uh, okay, so algebraic model two, three, and and I'll, I'll tell you more 
plus more. Right? We can do more. I mean, we can also do more, more geometrically. But I, maybe I should also s say before I forget. So again, you know, you can stay in the world of the loop space. And, and I mean, Kate has done a lot of work on you know defining many more operations. Uh, you can do a lot more stuff here. Uh, or you know, Nancy and I have been working on doing some other in some other in the more Tom Pondragon approach, writing a lot of things on the level of the loop space. But but uh, but it's a lot easier when you go to algebra. So so then things are we understand them better. Uh, algebraic model. Okay. So we know our algebraic model of the loop space. Okay. So cohomology LM. Is this Rothschild complex? Okay, and uh, uh, write it one more time so we don't forget. Uh, I just want to say, okay, remember this was, uh, you know, we, s we used the cup product here, right? It was an algebra. We used uh, the co chains as an algebra using the cup product. That's what we've used so far. And uh, now somehow we should imp input intersection, the intersection product in M, right? And what we saw in the first lecture was that intersection product intersection product on the homology of M, that was the same as the cup product in the cohomology of M when we use Poincaré duality. Okay, manifolds have this Poincaré duality between homology and cohomology, and it took the intersection product to the cup product. Okay, uh, huh. what is this Poincaré duality thing? So here's my, I need a little digression for, for, for making things more understandable, is to say, well, I wanna, I wanna talk about Frobenius algebras a little bit. So we should think of our manifold, it's, the cohomology, we're going to use the cohomology somehow, maybe the cochains. There's the cup product, and we know we should use Poincaré duality somehow. That's the, 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 the reasonable guess, right? And so, fact is this Poincaré duality, Poincaré duality plus cup product makes, uh, makes the cohomology of M. A what we call a Poincaré duality algebra which is equal to what we call a Frobenius algebra. And what is this? I'll give you a few definitions because that will be relevant. Uh, definition proposition A Frobenius algebra is an algebra, okay? Uh, and you know, I'm differential graded. I'm not going to write differential graded everywhere, but I'm I, I'm thinking differential graded. Uh, so DG everywhere. DG. I should I should put DG, and I should put DG Frobenius algebras. And really, I should have sh grading shifts and stuff. And I'm not. Um, I'm going to suppress this. Uh, differential graded algebra. Uh, so, one first definition. So, Frobenius algebra is. Let me see, let me see this one. Equal algebra plus algebra A, so DG algebra A, plus uh, a non degenerate, non degenerate pairing A tensor A. To A, so let's put it like up K, sorry, like a bracket, uh, like this, such that it's compatible with the multiplication. So A, B, C, it has this compatibility, it's equal to A, B, C. Okay, this is, yes? Is K the ring or the field? Yes, 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 we are back to, yes. Yeah. Um, and you know this is Poincaré duality. This is like you know uh, h n minus k tensor h k goes to the ground field. Okay, and this is compatible with the cup product because this is the cap and the cup and the sum. This is this is this is where you will find uh, 
you know, the cohomology, the cohomology of it. H n minus k tensor H k, which is isomorphic to H little k equals to the ground field, which is another another k. Okay, so that's one definition of uh, Frobenius algebras. It's also the same as having an algebra a plus a co a co you know so there's a plus a co-product. It's an algebra that also has, that has a product but also a co-product a to a tensor a. So this is a, a product backwards, uh, such that. And they have to satisfy the both unitary associative, co-associative, and they satisfy a so-called Frobenius relation, which goes if I go product and then co-product, so I go, you know, A B goes A tensor B goes to A times B, and then the usual way we write we write A goes to A prime tensor A double prime, by which we mean the sum of stuff. This is a notation uh, goes to A B prime. Yes. 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 It's it's this is it's true that these are equivalent. Yeah, this is equivalent definitions. Uh, so this should be equal to if I do co-product first and then product here, or it's also equal to I, go, I do co-product here and then product there. Okay. So you know a a tends to b goes to a prime a prime prime b uh, and this is a prime a prime prime b and so on same okay this should be equal that's a Frobenius algebra okay one can check these things these are little algebra fact facts that one can check and it's also here's yet another definition another way to say it it's uh, this is fun uh, it's an open topological field theory uh, what does that mean? Uh, I.e., you know, every every topological type of surface plus p plus q intervals intervals in the boundary of the surface. So something like this. Uh, you know, you can draw them as you like. Uh, doesn't really matter. So maybe I say this is an, you know, an incoming of p. That doesn't matter. It could be, you know, maybe this one is also an incoming. This is out. Uh, this is out. So of p plus q intervals, this is a surface somehow. Uh, you could have some genus and some other punctures. Uh, but it has some marked intervals, and some of them are in, some of them are out. Uh, defines an operation. An operation a tensor p to a tensor q, and these are compatible under gluing. Okay. What? <laughs> okay, so let me just say two words. So uh, when we were there from this non-degenerate pairing to the existence of a co-product, it's the fact it's a totally algebraic thing. It's because it's non-degenerate, there must exist, you know, for every guy, there must exist another guy so that you know you, you define the co-product from the non-degeneracy of the pairing. Okay, algebra. Uh, what happened here is very little happened. Uh, it's you should think of these as fat graphs. They live in the plane, right? I've drawn graphs in the plane, and you know, graphs are surfaces, right? If I have a fat structure, I know where they are in the plane. This is my little surface. Okay. It's not true that so little happened, right? But <laughs> at least this relation is given here because this is saying that this surface is the same as this surface. Okay. You know, I have a surface with two incoming 
and two outgoing, what is the surface? It's a disk, right? These both, they are both like this, right? It's a disk, and I have two incoming next to one another, and I have two outgoing next to one another. Okay, so this relation is one of the relations here, at least. Yes? Yes, so this is a, what is called actually a symmetric Frobenius algebra. Aha, yes, thank you. <laughs> One more little fact. It's more well known with the commutative. So a commutative Frobenius algebra, so add the commutativity relation, commutative Frobenius algebra, commutative multiplication, co-multiplication uh, is a closed uh, T closed topological field theory. So replace intervals by circles. This is a well known, this is an old you know, every maybe this has punctures also. No blah blah, blah no, maybe not. No, no punctures. Closed like this. Really closed. Uh, so now I have P plus Q F P incoming intervals and Q uh, circles, you know, replace so so operations parametrized by surfaces, closed surfaces, no, no extra, no punctures, closed surfaces with, <coughs> where, okay, surfaces with P plus Q boundary components. Okay. These are funny, there's a little book by, um, Joachim Koch that does all these things. Joachim Koch, it's called oh, uh, K O C K. It's so it's maybe it's called something like open like f topological field theories or something like that. I don't remember. It's a sh it's a short book. It's very nice. It's fun, and it goes between the surfaces and the algebra. I mean, he's doing the commutative case, but uh, uh, yeah, there, there are. Uh, good. So, so now we have this idea of, you know, having an algebraic structure. What I've done is, it's I, uh, is I started by talking about an algebraic structure, which was being a Frobenius algebra, which was totally, uh, you know, having some properties. And I, I told you, well, actually, it's the same as having operations for every surface. I'm giving you an operation, and they're compatible under, under gluing. So I'll take, I'll, I'll use that point of view when I, when we move to the to the Hochschild complex. Everybody ready? OK, where were we? Uh, so we were going to define, to, we were asking, well, can we get, find that product on the Hochschild, uh, on the Hochschild complex? And to find that product, we are given uh, a manifold, and it's code chain as an algebra on the, the cup product. And we know the cup product with point carrier duality makes this the cohomology, at least, into a, a, a Frobenius algebra. So, so question is, what structure, in this sense, algebraic structure, can I define product, co-products, or something? What structure does C star A, A have if A is A Really, I should say commutative, commutative, I should say commutative, Frobenius algebra. Uh, well, I, I, I switched. I, th there's something that is not quite right here. So is this good for us? Uh, well, so we have the cohomology. What I, the cohomology of M is a, well, it is a commutative. The cup product is commutative on, on homology, on cohomology. It's a commutative Frobenius algebra. Okay, what about? Co chains on them. I don't have an answer to this. Okay, I don't have a good answer. Uh, some. Homotopy version of it. I 
I mean, there are some answers. There exist some answers, but not in these terms, not in the terms of telling me all the operations. Uh, people have wished that if you took the homology of the moduli space of Riemann surfaces, that this would do it. But I think that's crazy. <laughs> I'm on this video. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I think that's crazy. I think there's no reason why, why, moduli, uh, why moduli space should have anything to do with them. Uh, so, and I don't know any way of making this, uh, yeah, other than the one I'll, I'll give you, which doesn't, yeah, anyway. So, so I, don't, I don't have a good answer, but uh, luckily, um, there's, a, there's, there's a paper by uh, Pascal Lambrex and, and Don Stanley uh, that says I don't have to worry about this. Uh, if, at least if, I'm, if I, if I want to just uh, see what happens. Uh, so they say that actually the co-chains co -chains on M are quasi isomorphic as a differential graded, well, commutative differential graded algebra. This is in the commutative differential graded algebra world uh, to an algebra A, which is Frobenius. A, which is a Frobenius algebra I, I, on the nose. With, so DG, right, differential graded Frobenius, with the homology of A isomorphic to the cohomology of M as a Frobenius as a Frobenius algebra, right? So, well, so uh, this is not unique, and not not in a unique way. Uh, but you know, so I do not know that this is a a unique thing to do in any sort of sense. Uh, I do not know that I lose that I don't lose information, but I also do not know that I lose information. So, so far, I, I have no reason to not to not do this. Uh, except that people may tell me that this is philosophically wrong. Right? Philosophically, I'm doing something totally wrong. I take the nice code chain that has a lot of homotopy, I don't know what, and I, and I crush it to a model. Well, you know, well, how bad is this? I, I, we don't know. We just simply don't know. Uh, but but I, I, I'll argue that that model knows quite a lot already. And, and well, it's interesting if, it's, if, if something happens. Uh, if I've lost something, then if one can show that one has lost something, this is interesting. Uh, but I don't know. Uh, well, it's not true. I mean, we know a little bit. Uh, no, we, yeah, we know a little bit. But, but uh, we, we know there are some subtleties when you go Z mod 2. Uh, we know that one has to be, yeah. But anyway, let's. let's we, I'm, I'm, ah, this is over the Russian, so I am in char characteristic zero here. So, so Z mod 2 is not there. Okay, so, so I'm only talking over the Russian. Okay, uh, so, so I have my question and I have uh, advertised, I've said, well, it's, it's, at least it would be relevant in some, in some way to, to the loop space. So the question was, uh, if I know something about A, what do I know about its co chains? It's Hochschild. Uh, it's Hochschild chains. So, so example, uh, C star A A has the B operator for any, for any, any algebra A. Okay? We've constructed, with, I've said there is this rotation thing. This thing that encoded the rotation is always there, any algebra. Uh, C star A A has a product, the, the so-called shuffle product, plus actually power operations, power, so-called power operations, when A is commutative. Well, you know, if these are you know, A commutative, for example, e.g., A is, well, co-chains on a space. Well, not quite, you know, some model of this, right? Is a model, actually a minimal model would do. Um, some differential graded algebra, an actual commutative differential graded algebra. Over the rationals, you can always do this. Um, all work of Denis also. Um, 
so, so you can replace the cochains by a differential graded algebra, which is commutative. And so, you know, so, so the, the whole shield cochains are again, it's still the loop space, right? Da, da, da. It's the loop space, it's the cohomology of the loop space. Well, uh, x, uh, this is the cohomology of a space, it has a product, it has the cup product. Okay. And uh, hey, hey, it had power operations. We have talked about them a lot, right? So they are there in algebra. Okay, power has has cup uh, cup product and power, you know, these guys. Uh, so so algebra knows about them. Uh, okay, so so and and then you know there was there were other theorems. Uh, Tradler, Zenalian. Talking about Frobenius algebras, well, they found uh, uh, some core diagrams acting. Core diagrams, including the Chaser Levin product. So, uh, and uh, and then there were work by uh, Costello, uh, Konsevich, Sobelman, saying something like. Uh, yeah, open field theories in a in a in a more ho whatever open com conformal field theories, whatever that is, giving closed conformal field theories on the you know this is for the algebra and this is for cochains chains uh, whole shield chains right so 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 there were such such statements in the, I, I'm not making this very precise but there, there were such such types of theorems in the li literature. So, so I worked uh, with Craig Westerland and we were really, uh, our motivation was really sort of, well, understand these theorems and understand where the commutativity should come in because the commutativity wasn't, wasn't taken into account. Oh, it is here, but it wasn't uh, for the loop phase. So, so what we fa what we did is we built a little machine, right. and the machine took as input uh, a type type of algebra. So, for example, e.g., these things, right? Commutative, a infinity. Um, you know, Frobenius, Fro Commutative Frobenius, if you like, Poisson algebra, I don't know. Some, something with a multiplication plus some other operations. Okay, we put this into the machine and out comes um, a, 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 a chain complex of natural operations on C star AA. So natural within these types of algebras and and universal in some in some way. In in some sense. Okay. So so it's easy now we just have to plug it into the machine and see what comes out, right? It's not always easy to see what comes out. Uh, okay. <laughs> so Outcomes of chain complex. I can write down the chain complex. It's horrible. Uh, so, so uh, what we did is we, we we did first the old example. So, so we plugged in uh, Frobenius. Very nice. It works totally beautifully. We get something which is quasi. It's much bigger, but quasi isomorphic to this. So we we recover the result, but we also show that it's you know on on the level of homology they got all the operations that could be made this way. And, and we did this also here. So open topological conformal field theory. This is moduli space, homology of moduli space showing up. The open guy sh gave the closed guy. So, so closed. So this, was, this worked all, all very beautifully. Uh, but what about that commutative thing, right? And when you don't really know what to do, uh, you know, you can always try to ask one of your students, right? So it's, <laughs> it's a good trick, right? So I had a, a, a student at the time, uh, Angela Clubs, and uh, 
she was very algebraically minded, so that worked perfectly. You know, I said, well, why don't you plug in community for Bunis algebras? You know, I don't know what happens. Right? Um, and uh, well, it wasn't so easy. So she started by doing commutative algebras, uh, just commutative. This is beautiful. So she reco recovered these old things, the shuffle products, the uh, these power operations, and again, you know, she found actually one more operation people didn't realize you could do. <laughs> I mean, just, you know, she, but she worked out, you know, what what are the things you can do if you have a commutative algebra. Uh, so I insisted, come on, you know, commutative Frobenius algebra. That's all I had to do. Like, come on, do it. <laughs> so it worked. <laughs> okay, so it, it's beautiful. I mean, she was just thinking algebra, right? She had just done commutative algebra, so thinking algebra, algebra, algebra. And then she put Frobenius algebra, 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 algebra. And, uh, and then she came back, and she came back with a, a chain complex. So she came back with a, a chain complex of what she called, in the end, she called loop diagrams. And, and loop diagrams are really what I want to call equal to topology operations. Uh, acting, acting on the Hochschild complex of uh, of a you know a community of Frobenius, right? So so what does this mean, and, and what are these things? So so this means that I so for every e q greater equal to one, there, there's a chain complex. It's called a D P. Q plus maps, chain maps, D, P, Q, tensor, C star, A, A, tensor, P, to C star, A, A, tensor, Q. So for every commutative Frobenius algebra. And, and what is this? This boundary is by joining points. Boundary is join, join points. It's like collapse intervals, right? Collapse. Uh, so, so let me f finish by saying, you know, why is this string topology operation? So, so I mean, Nancy and I have been working on making this uh, uh, on the level of the loop space, right? On the level of the loop space, we go backwards. We have a bunch of circles, and we're looking at a subspace of guys that have certain self-intersection. I've marked some points that intersect at these points, and then when I'm when they do intersect at these points, this was this Charles Sullivan product where we were looking at a subset of loops that had admit a certain self-intersection. And where they intersect, I do a concatenation product, or, or I read some loops, right? I mean, there's nothing saying I have to read a concat, you know, I could do many times, I could go many times around the loop or something, right? So this is what I would like to call the string topology operation. It came from algebra, so I'll, I'll stop here.